Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. In this one, I'm gonna answer the top 10 frequently asked questions about my five by eight cargo trailer that I converted to be the ultimate off-road overland camper. This is the truck box. And if you're not familiar with the project, I have another video of the whole build series and I suggest you watch that. For this video, I'm gonna answer all your questions that you've asked me so far. Let's get right into it. Now, one of the most popular questions that I've gotten so far about the trailer is how much does it weigh? Honestly, up to date, I've just been guessing. Sticker label on the trailer from the factory was 860 pounds. I estimate that the trailer is sitting around 1500 pounds. We're gonna answer that once and for all right now. We're gonna take the trailer to the scales and see how much this bad boy weighs. <laughs> the scales here. We're gonna throw the truck on the scale and uh, we'll get an accurate reading of how much the trailer weighs. Never done this before so uh, wish me luck. Here. I think I'm just gonna go inside and see what's going on here. Results are in and uh, yeah, we're pretty close. We're pretty close. So another question I get all the time is what awning is this? This is the 270 degree nomadic awning by OVS Overland Vehicle Systems. It sets up in under 60 seconds and it essentially triples the usable square footage of the trailer. It's all nice and compact under a cover. They're a great company to deal with. I had to get my cover replaced because the zipper broke and they sent one to me at no charge. How much does the trailer cost? Is another question I get asked all the time and I do have a separate video specifically doing a breakdown cost of the build item by item. It is a little bit outdated because I did do some improvements and some modifications after that cost build. Long story short, I'm all in under $12,000 into this trailer build. So, and we're in Canadian currency, by the way. Folks in the United States, dollar works in your favor. So another question I get quite often is, how is my cheap diesel heater doing? I am happy with it. There's been some hiccups along the way. But honestly, I paid $200 for that thing and that thing's been keeping me warm. I think three winters now I've had it. It works, it's reliable, but there are a few kinks and things that you need to upgrade and I'll go over those right now. So that is one of the things I needed to upgrade is the exhaust pipe. And as you can see, that is a actual stainless steel exhaust diesel heater from one of the name brands. This thing is a lot more heavy duty and it's not gonna rust out like the original one did. A UV rated 10 liter fuel tank and uh, it's holding up a lot better. The other one cracked right down the seam in under five months. The diesel heater itself, quite good and I'm happy with it, but all the external components, I do suggest upgrading. So that's the exhaust, the fuel tank, and the intake hose. Whew. I almost destroyed my brand new tailgate. This is different, you know, with this new truck. Because the, the tongue on the trailer is so short, and I guess the tailgate is longer than the one on the Ranger, um, that's gonna hit the jack. So there's an upgrade I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to replace this jack and have a swivel mount one or something that's a little bit lower. How long did the build take? So I like to say that this build took five months to do and you gotta remember that I was doing this for my thesis for my master's of architecture. So I was also writing my thesis while building this trailer and I was also video documenting, editing videos and posting to YouTube. And that was five months kind of on and off while I was doing those other things. But that being said, the trailer build is never done. I'm always tinkering on it. I'm always modifying it. I'm always doing things to it. Yes, it took five months to build the trailer, kind of working at it pretty steadily, but it's a never ending project that keeps going.
So another question I get all the time is, why spend all this time and effort on such a small trailer? Why not a bigger trailer? And really at the end of the day, I wanted something small. I actually wanted to start with something smaller than this. So this is a five by eight trailer. It may not look like this in video because the angle of the camera is quite wide, but it is essentially in totality, the trailer is eight foot long, five foot wide, and five and a half feet tall. After everything, you know, the cabinets here take up some space. I'm left with just under seven feet, under five feet with the walls, uh, a little bit under five and a half feet with the height. As you can see, I can't stand the trailer upright, but I'm okay with that because I like to see this trailer as a hybrid between a teardrop trailer and full RV. And this thing goes down the back roads. I never wanted my height of the trailer to be limiting to the trails and stuff that I go down. So on that note, another question I get all the time is, what would I change? Do I have any regrets with this build? On the topic of size, I would rather start Starting with a 5x10 trailer. I just need that extra two feet uh, at the end of the bed, you know, it just would make this much more enjoyable. And I'm really learning that right now because our family is growing. We welcomed our baby boy to the world. Uh, I don't really know how we're gonna fit him in here with the trailer with myself, my wife, and the dog, and now we have a child. I'm looking at alternatives of how to make this space expandable, or do I have to consider upgrading the trailer size and doing a bigger build? I do have another video, link again, that talks about my 10 lessons learned, uh, mistakes, or things that I would do differently. Okay, so the next question is regarding egress and access, doors essentially, and as you can see, this is just a standard five bike trailer with the rear single barn door. It doesn't have the side door. For a while, I was looking to install a side man door. The prices of doors were just ungodly expensive. I didn't want to get into, you know, restructuring the trailers. I just opted to have the single door. That's been absolutely fine. I have no regrets with that. The way I keep people from locking me in with the uh, gate latch, this has been pointed out quite often, you know, if I was in the trailer sleeping, for example, and some crazy person decided to come in and lock me in, then essentially you would be stuck. So the way I get around that is I do have a puck lock and I install it on the receiver here. So, you know, no one can actually close the latch down. And to be honest, where I go camping, I don't normally run into people. And if I am around people, it's people that I trust and uh, I don't have any worries. If things got really bad though, I could bust my way out that window. So far the puck lock has been good. I've never feared someone coming and locking that, that bar closed. Another question is why no toilet or shower? And to be frank, that's just not my style of overlanding, of camping. If I am at an established campground, normally they have public facilities. I know that there's products out there that you can hook onto the outside of your trailer or you can have a portable pop-up kind of shower. And that's probably something I would consider going ahead in the future. So another question, and this kind of ropes into the thing of hygiene is, no, these are not to go potty. These are not holes to go to the washroom in. For some reason that's a question that keeps getting brought up is these are ice fishing holes. So in the winter time, I bring this trailer out on the ice. This is my ice fishing shack. So these are two catch covers. Take your auger, drill your hole, and you know, away you go, you're fishing. Okay, so one more bonus question, and this is one I've got surprisingly a lot. Am I related to John Paul Tremblay, the guy from Trailer Park Boys? You're not gonna have a pet lobster, man. Call him Little Julian. The answer is no, I'm not I'm not related to him. No family connections to him. I thought it was quite funny, so thanks to people who are asking that. The results are in. I think I have a good idea of what the trailer weighs now, or a better idea, or the best idea of what the trailer weighs currently. I had to do a little bit of math, so uh, let's go over it here. So what we have here is a few different categories, and because the truck and trailer is shorter than like a semi, uh, the way it lined up on the scales is a little bit different. We got the steer axle, so essentially that's the front scale. That number came in at 4,860 pounds. So that's the full weight of the truck. And then we have the drive axle, which is the scale that was behind the truck, which essentially the trailer sitting on. On a semi truck, that would be, you know, the rear wheels. And that is 1,440 pounds at a gross total weight of 6,300 pounds. The trailer itself weighs a little bit more than 1,400 pounds because the tongue is attached to the truck. So some of that weight is buried inside the 4,860 pounds. So the gross weight is 6,300 pounds. And in order to figure out the trailer weight, I need to subtract a few things. I know the curb weight of the truck to be 4,445 pounds. I subtracted 67 pounds for fuel. And that I calculated from knowing that fuel weighs around 6.3 pounds 
per gallon. Tank on the Tacoma is 21.1 gallons and I had a half tank of gas. So 10.55 times 6.35 equals 67. I rounded up. And then I also subtracted 200 pounds. So that's including myself and just some other odds and ends that I have in the truck that I don't count to the weight of the trailer. So once I subtract all those numbers, I'm left with 1,588 pounds. So roughly 1,600 pounds is the weight of the trailer, the dry weight of the trailer. If I want to figure out how much weight I add to the trailer, now I know that the weight of the trailer is 1,588 pounds. I subtracted 860 pounds, which I know to be the curb weight of the trailer from the factory, which equals out to be 728 pounds. So at the end of the day, I roughly added 730 pounds to the trailer, converting it to be the ultimate off-road camper. So now to figure out the tongue weight, I have to take the dry weight of the trailer, which is 1,588 pounds, and subtract the 1,440 pounds, which is the weight of the trailer connected to the truck, which leaves me with 148 pounds. So roughly, you know, 150 pound tongue weight is actually really well balanced. You want your tongue weight to be around 10 to 15 percent of the weight of the trailer so that it's actually worked out pretty perfectly at the end of the day i can confidently say that the trailer weighs 1600 pounds but that is a dry weight so we have to remember that when we're going out camping and stuff we have passengers we've got fuel cargo so you know all your camping equipment cooler with food water booze all that stuff adds up i can definitely say that i'm over 2000 pounds fully loaded when I'm, I'm going out camping so at the end of the day that is the weight of the trailer Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in today's video. I'd like to take a quick second here just to give you an update on merch and stuff and branding. So I have a bunch of these JTYT stickers with the little icons and then I also have circle stickers which I'm pretty proud of. Those are the ones that you've seen in my one video with the walkthrough and they have the truck and the trailer on them. So I am working hard behind the scenes on my store but that's just not available yet. I'm still working on some product. I have some samples I'm going through and I'm working on designs. This is a t-shirt with the icon slabs on it which turned out pretty good, but I am doing some tests and trials. I got a sweater, which I wasn't happy with, so I'm not gonna put that out there. I am working on some branding, and so like, I love these stickers and everything and the JTYT, but I don't consider myself a YouTuber. I am a designer by trade. I am working on some designs, which are quite unique, I think, and are special to me. That'll be available with the merch. I think I got a poopy diaper I need to change. Stay tuned, guys. <laughs>